Thank you, Howard. Um, Your Excellencies, Minister Dati Ali Apong, Minister Josh Frydenberg, Minister Wan Yuanidi Bin Tuanku Yafar, Ministers from across the Asia Pacific, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, colleagues, and friends. Thank you for this opportunity to join this year's Asia Pacific Rainforest Summit. I congratulate the uh, Ministry of uh, Primary Resources and Tourism of Brunei, as well as the Department of Environment and Energy of Australia for your successful leadership. Um, we are at a critical turning point when political commitments on sustainable development and climate change need to be transformed into real world actions. And this second Asia Pacific Rainforest Summit offers a unique platform for the region to explore how economic diversification can support both the development and the environment agenda. On behalf of C4, we are grateful for this opportunity to serve as a science and engagement partner. And I want to recognize the effort of the entire team behind the conference from Brunei, Australia, C4, and other partners that have worked so hard for the past months. To me, the key word of the summit is integration. First, we aspire to forest and landscape management that integrate economic, environmental, and social aspirations. Secondly, the summit, the summit is a conscious effort for integrating public, private, and people actors in achieving real, real impact. And when we join forces between these three Ps, private, people, public, private, and people, actually, um, we could also call them politics, profit, and participation. When we join these, we have a real chance to make a difference that counts on the ground and benefits everyone. Thirdly, we seek to integrate forest and forestry issues into the mainstream of sustainable development. The new SDG framework is a tool and provides a language to make this happen. There's been a tendency to park forests and forestry in the environment corner. In this room, we all know how important forests and forestry are to all aspects of sustainable development. But it will take some courage and determination from all of us to change the narrative on forests and forestry and raise the awareness of their true and full value. Earlier this year, I had the pleasure to release CFOR's new strategy for the next 10 years. This is a product of uh, worldwide consultation with stakeholders. And not surprisingly, we came to the same or similar conclusions. The need to broadly integrate forestry in the new climate and development agendas. So rather than developing an isolated forestry approach, we need to build on the Agenda 2030 for sustainable development and on the Paris Agreement. Within both of these new frameworks, forest and forestry are expected to contribute in a diversity of ways to human well-being and prosperity. And therefore, we see that the concept of forestry actually needs to be redefined, both for us in the expert community, but more importantly, for everybody, everyone else out there. So this led us to define our mission, CFOR's mission, around the full set of 17 sustainable development goals to include all of them. Because forestry is about all aspects of sustainable development. Poverty, food, health, energy, water, climate change, rights, economic growth, trade, life on land, life underwater. Yes, even life underwater. We work a lot on mangroves, as you, as you know. Um, so let, let us therefore redefine forestry and say that forestry is all contributions to sustainable development made possible through forests and trees. Then I think we have a good basis to move forward. 
During this summit, we will have a significant focus on value chains, finance, and investments to see how these can coexist with sustainable, low-carbon development. This is crucial, especially in this region that drives a large part of the global economy and at the same time face so serious environmental challenges. Addressing this requires us to look beyond land issues per se and also focus on the other classical economic parameters, labor, capital, and innovation. There are some two specific challenges to mention here. The first is that in achieving sustainable value chains, um, we have to make sure that they secure commodity supply, contribute to low carbon rural development, and maintain economic services. Second is that smallholders and small and medium scale businesses are able to successfully compete and benefit from this integration in global value chains and also to access fair, affordable, and long-term capital under higher environmental standards. New commitments from the private sector are indeed encouraging, and we see a host of both challenges and opportunities here. This, this summit will be an excellent opportunity to discuss these further. Let me finish by saying that integration also pertains to integration around and across economic sectors. We will not realize the full potential of forest and forestry in sustainable development unless we work across traditional institutional boundaries. We shouldn't continue to nurture a separate forest and forestry agenda. Instead, I believe we must genuinely work together with our colleagues in agriculture, energy, water, finance, infrastructure, trade, tourism, education, and so on. The common denominator that brings us together in this quest is landscapes. Landscapes with a wide diversity in shapes, in sizes, they will be a cornerstone for the future we want. And in this region, multifunctional landscapes provide homes and livelihoods for 450 million people. So bringing together people and their expectations to find good solutions in landscapes, including forests, is therefore to me the best investment we can make for future generations. So again, thank you for this opportunity to speak at the opening of the summit. In case you wonder why I haven't said more about forests and climate change, it's because the next session is on that topic and I'll be on the panel, so I've saved some of my points to that session. Thank you all for coming, and let's make sure that uh, we together make a difference that counts. Thank you very much. May we invite the chairperson to cordially invite the guest of honour to present a souvenir as a token of appreciation to the keynote speaker.